okay, come on, team, what's what's happened to us? I feel quite emotional. Oh, Do God. You? Are yeah. we going to have tears today? I don't know. It's a possibility. Okay, can... They're sort of there. Okay. Depends what we kind of Let's discuss, all have a cry. A Monday, um, a Monday cry. Monday cry. I, I could go as well. So don't worry. So if you cry... I'll cry with you. I'm just going to laugh I'm at both of you. Making a deal. Yeah, I promise you I'll make a deal with you. If you okay. cry, I'll cry. Why okay. are you feeling emotional? I don't know. That's the thing. I think sometimes we just have days when we're more emotional than others. The moon. The moon Potentially. Was, the, moon was, the full moon was quite it was full a, on, wasn't it? Was it? Big one. Wait, it was when a big Wait, when was the full moon? Uh, did you not see it? That big old white thing outside your window? <laughs> I didn't look out. Wait, wait, was it last night? It was on Saturday. Was it or Friday? Oh my god! Okay, can, just One of can the I? Days. Okay, I'm gonna, this podcast um, is about being truthful, right? So it's an honest podcast, All right? You can move it, Keg, if you want. You can just yeah. do it. Yeah, there you go. Go on, move oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, hello. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, lean back, girl. <laughs> there you go. Now I'm in therapy. Let's lean go. Lean <laughs> back. Um, th- th- this podcast is about nothing off limits. Um, and I said this on the bonus episode. Something kicked in with me the other day. Maybe when the full moon happened, where suddenly anxiety went <laughs> inside of me, and I was like, "What the hell?" Suddenly felt anxious. Does um does Botox give you that? <laughs> do, do, do needles give you that? The perfect person to go to. He just laughs at it. I can literally say to him. I'm I, trying to bring okay. light on quite clearly a very, very sad situation. All right, so. I'm going to say it to you. I feel a bit anxious. What are you going to say about it? Go on. Give you a little stroke on the knee there. <laughs> you even tell you, me. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> just have your cornflakes. You'll be fine. This actually is something that I kind of wanted yeah. to speak about. Because I've been thinking a lot recently about, obviously with the, the podcast that I'm doing and stuff, it's quite a heavy female audience. And yeah. the nature of the show is talking a lot about you know, feelings and things we're experiencing. And I've just been thinking a lot about where is that space for men? Mm. Doesn't exist. It's Doesn't not here. Exist. Well, it's <laughs> not here, that's for sure. You'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> well, it, it, no, it's interesting you say that. Um because I I had the okay, I had this her I spoke to a guy the other day and I think I said this before but I was talking to him about guys opening up and I said do you know what we need to be in a situation where guys open up more and he said Jamie it's so easy saying that what's different is saying the you right now Jamie you saying oh you've got depression you got anxiety you got insomnia you got relationship OCD you got relationship issues whatever it is and I went he said labeling on yourself is so much harder than just saying well let's open up a space mm. anyone can say let's open up a space to the point where I, I said this again on the bonus episode with um with with Sophie because I was feeling a certain way I was starting mm. arguments with her and she was like what the fuck is wrong with you mm. and I said do you know what so to, to be really honest with you I just been feeling a little funky and I don't know why and I've been embarrassed about telling you. Yeah. So I've been fighting with you because I want you to ask me what the matter is so I have an excuse to tell you. Because I can't, I can't bring, I can't it. communicate. Because mm. I, I find it too awkward. I find I'm embarrassed well, it's to also, talk about it. It's so socialized into men that the, the only kind of acceptable emotion to go to is, is anger. So yes. a lot of the time men will get angry, but there's so much more going on beneath the surface. So much more. This God, is what man, you, you said. Open up, You buddy. said you get angry. Well, yeah. I think I think it's about unpackaging it and almost like talking about it like you just did from A to Z, like what you're feeling and why you're doing what you're doing. And then you can kind of like get over it, I guess. I don't know. It's, 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 I, I think it's January, February is the Monday, Tuesday of the week. And mm. I feel like I feel like it's of the season, of the yeah. season right? It is 100 percent. It's the Monday, the Tuesday. So January, it, but January also almost isn't as bad. February's more bad as Tuesday. As Tuesday, it's it's not. It's not because Monday you're like, oh, I was still a little bit hungover. <laughs> yeah, I had I had, did have this the other day where I uh, went out on a Saturday. I can't drink anymore. I've decided. And I and I went out on the Saturday night and I woke up in the morning and I was like, I was, like, well, I was sleeping. I had made the sofa pillows as a duvet. <laughs> what? I was underneath the pillows on the sofa. I quite like doing that sometimes. No, but you I, do have a great sofa. Oh, I have the that best sofa, good sofa. But um, I don't know. I just, uh, at the moment, funkiness is in the air. But you're good at these things. So you, you're, you're, you channel your your soul much better than most people. So I why? I don't know if that's necessary. I think you do. You, I, I would say because you understand yourself pretty well. Yeah, but I definitely, um, you know, like everybody, I repeat the same patterns. And like you say, when things come up, some, sometimes I'll behave in a way that I'm not aware of at the time. And then only on reflection, I'm like, okay, maybe that's what was going on. So a big thing at the moment that's coming up for me that I'm thinking a lot about is, you know, owning our stories and kind of finding out where they came from, addressing our 
negative, t- toxic patterns of behavior. And I think that that's just a constant process of unearthing. Mm. Come on, come on. It's really what, what, no, it, it is. But to, but to explain, so what do you think is, what do you think, what is your toxic repetition that you do? Um, there are a few. Okay. But I guess one, one that was definitely coming up more over the Christmas period was, and I, I never really recognize this in myself because I'm quite a messy person. I never thought I was a perfectionist because I associate perfectionists with people that have very immaculate bedrooms. But actually perfectionism was driving me in a way that was becoming really toxic. And I think it had been there for quite a large portion of my life. Perfectionist in, in work. No such thing as perfect. Well, exactly. And when you're striving for something that's actually unachievable, what would happen? I realized the cycle of behavior was like, I felt like I needed to be perfect. And just to kind of go to like the core of it, I think that we are all have, a lot of us suffer from this belief that we are unworthy, not lovable and not enough or Mm -hmm. all of the three. And that then manifests in different ways and different behaviors. And it can also be, you know, perfectionism is is something that's socially not only accepted, but um, celebrated. Mm. But if the underlying belief is that you know, you're not enough or you're not lovable as you are, then that becomes a very toxic drive. Mm. And so I think it's just been unpacking that where it stems from. And also because it's something that's unattainable, you then kind of sabotage yourself along the way and that creates a pattern. So recognizing those kind of things. Oh, we're, going, so we're going in so you're, this morning. You're, no, you're, you're going in. You're, we're, um, really, we're really touching the sides of the moment. We're going in. Eh. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm now, ask, I'm now ask me, ask me. <laughs> My turn, ask me. What, ask me. What's, no, 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 no. Go on, ask me. I feel time? terrible. <laughs> okay, Jamie. God, I feel awful. Talk, talk, talk to us. Okay, well, you want to hear, okay, we're, we're going to do a little session here. We're going to go round the table. So you've told yours. Uh, Mitt, we're going to then get to you. This is going to be hilarious. You tell me. Oh, mine is. Yeah, I can't wait. I was, I was just picturing your bedroom when you were talking about that because you were saying how, like, you just. <laughs> That's you, what you, you actually had. get out because you're like, there's no such thing as perfection. You go into a room and it's literally like a hoard. As well. <laughs> I think you've taken it a little bit too far. <laughs> no, but honestly, like, I'm just so zen now. Fucking stinks in here. <laughs> okay, what, what are my bad things that I do? Um, We've only got an hour. Man. This okay. Is take a long okay. Time. Bad things that I do. Um, I I I drive myself again. Perfection. I, you, I, you can't drive. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest fucking. Sorry. 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 Okay. Okay, we're back in the room. Don't, don't want to smell my microphone. <laughs> oh my god! It's like di- distortion on there. Like, like, oh, the fuck was that? <laughs> okay, so so what I what do I do to myself that is bad? This is a really interesting subject. I've never spoken about this in the podcast, so I love this. Um, I lots of things. I um, I never let myself rest. This is it. Sorry, ever, ever, ever. So typically with someone who, who, because I think we all work hard, right? We all, all three of us here, we work hard. Um, but when you typically work, the reason why people, I think, wore suits to work and why going wearing suits to work is a good thing or wearing uniform to go to school is a good thing because it separates your work and home life. So when you put on your suit or you put on your uniform in the morning, you go to your work and you realize you're doing work. And then when you come home, you take it off. You're then in relaxing mode. So you have a complete separation. Mm-hmm. Probably I don't have that. So I podcast, I have candy kittens, I have whatever's going on. And so I'm constantly working. Then when I come home, I sit on social media. What can mm-hmm. I do on social media to get the validation or whatever I need? So do, 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 all the time. So there's no rest. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is, is I go into bed, um, have loads of sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get four <laughs> blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> on your own <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in my own head <laughs> it's quite a talent you got there <laughs> and then um and you I wake s- up and repeat well i, I firstly sit on my phone so i, I mm. watch youtube video duh, duh, duh. then i fall asleep because i'm tired mm-hmm. um and also by that point i haven't really I've sort of engaged with my partner, but like not, not that much. We kind of just, you know, we sort of, it's not passing ships at all. We very much love each other, but there's not that sort of s- time, road, carved, that, out. That time yeah. carved out. Then you fall asleep and you wake up the next morning, repeat. Mm. And, and almost falling asleep is like a nap. 
Yeah, well, you're falling asleep because you're exhausted. Yeah, yeah. Mm. What would you, if if you had to think about it now, what would you say the underlying thing behind beneath that is? Because I'm so worried that if I stop, I'm going to be disappear. left behind. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be disappear. disappear. Everything's going to go. Mm-hmm. And so I'm so concerned that things are going to just disappear and going to stop. That, that, oh my God, if I don't do, 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 do. Yeah. Then Keep spinning the plates. Kind of completely. Thing. And then what was interesting when lockdown happened is everything did stop, but nothing disappeared. But I've now forgotten that. Mm. And so there's that, which is really bad. And I'm not kind to myself. Mm. My inner voice is terrible. To the, yeah. to the point where, okay, you, you're not doing this. You're not doing imposter syndrome. Um, you know, you, you have an inner voice that has a particular accent. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We spoke about this yeah, in the yeah. episode. Really? What, you, what does he sound like? Uh, have you drunk cider again? <laughs> He's not West Country. That's why mine. Do, oh, sorry, just, why don't you brush your teeth this morning? <laughs> your breath stinks. You're, you're, you can't get married in breath like that. <laughs> No, uh, mine is weirdly West Country, I think. Actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, we're not on to you yet. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're coming to yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be very short. <laughs> no, very it's brief. not going to be short. And you're going to open up on this occasion. You should open Fuck your you. arms, yeah, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Stop, yeah. Open. <laughs> <laughs> he's, ah. he's sitting cross He's like, where's the exit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to get into you. So not kind to myself, which a lot of people can relate to. Because I feel like I'm going to be forgotten and left behind. And uh, the other one is... I'm still concerned so much what people think of me. Mm. So I had this the other day. I said it on our bonus episode. I messaged some guy who I hadn't spoken to in six years because he flashed up on my timeline. I said, ah, so I messaged him. He didn't reply. And I went, I've obviously done something wrong to him. Mm. <laughs> six years ago. Why on earth would he reply? But in my head, I create a narrative that is negative towards me. Again, it's that inner voice. Those are things that lead you down the wrong path. Mm. And it's the typical thing that if you were going to say to, um, if I was going to say to you, you were going to say to me, I feel this and this, I'd be like, I would say to you truthfully on my heart, I'd say, you're incredible. You're amazing. You're beautiful. You're talented. God, you know, so many people, you know, if your name was in a bucket, anyone would want to grab it. But in your inner voice, you go, no, 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 negative, negative, negative. Exactly. And I'm the same. Mitt, your turn. Come on, buddy. Round the circle. Have you seen the wind outside? This one's... <laughs> God, it's uh, nearly, Open up, nearly lost my bastard. toupee earlier. Um, <laughs> my toupee. I, I mean, I can, I can sort of relate with a lot of the, the stuff that you said. I mean, but during lockdown, I became a little bit of a spiritualist in, in certain ways and kind of learnt different methods and different techniques that are kind of very personal to myself, but in how to deal. I think it, like touching on what you said, those those thoughts and the negatives and the emotions that you feel. I think the mistake a lot of people think is that if you do certain things, they're just going to go away and you're going to live in this like blissful existence Mm. where nothing, nothing ever goes wrong. But what actually happens is those things do continue to happen. But if you, there's certain things that you can learn and do, which means that you can just manage it. And, and, and actually it's a very brief emotion. It's a very Mm. brief thought. And you kind of like go, oh, I actually recognize that. And you let it pass and you let it go. Rather than it kind of getting its hooks in and taking yeah, you down. Yeah, and, and it yeah. would last for a week and it would lead me to do bad things yeah. and i become, you know, a, a worse Give me person. an example though. Give me an example. Um, I guess one of the one of the things I've recent noticed, uh, one, one of the things I've recently noticed is, um, is comparison and, and worrying about what people think. Mm. And huge one. Uh, yeah, because I think, you know, comparing. we, we, we yeah. spend so much of our lives... And I, I sort of start to think that everything's a bit of a competition and, you know, the things that I do need to match up to this. And then, but now I recognize it and go, that's just kind of bollocks really. You just need to focus on yourself and, and do everything from like a really genuine place. Mm. Like do the stuff that you really want to do because that will make you the happiest and, you know, it will get you to where you want to be. And then you will be yeah. better than everyone else anyway. So then you won't have any I did. I, I saw this quote where they said, it was like an Instagram quote or whatever That's it was. where you get most of your deep prolific. No, it's not. It's either off TikTok or... No, I just heard this quote and it said, um, oh, what did it say? The first quote I ever heard is, um, if it makes you happy, it doesn't need to make sense. And I think that's such a cool thing. It's so true because... I don't get it. <laughs> but, but, but it makes me happy. <laughs> So I, I fucking love that. That's really well, good. I think what it boils down to, like we are living in a, it's a culture of comparison, you know, yes. like never before when we were younger, we kind of had our peers and the people we were at school with and we'd compare to them and maybe be a bit competitive. Now we have, everyone has the entire world. Like you go on your phone first thing in the morning and you're comparing yourself before it's even, you know, 7.30 
to hundreds of people on the internet that you just didn't know existed before. That in itself warps your own sense of identity and what success means to you. Mm. And how can you, how can you like navigate that space when you are flooded with all this information all the time and constantly feeling like you're falling short? Because there's always going to be someone that has more that's doing it a little bit better. And like, look, for example, you're doing so many different things. You're so successful and yet you're still feeling this sense of not enoughness. Like what else, what else do I need to be doing? Like who else do I need to be pleasing? Like where else do I need to be? And it just becomes His girlfriend. exhausting. <laughs> what? <laughs> just, just shouted my girlfriend. <laughs> Your girlfriend. <laughs> I totally agree with you, Case. And it's a real, um, I think also there's a kind of really odd male thing in there as well where guys definitely feel like they have to compare themselves it's weird i had this i so at school i was a i was a great sportsman um don't, don't, it's no, every that. time it every is, podcast yeah, still hold the javelin record um i i was a really good sportsman and then um university was like an odd place to like figure yourself out but then i went and joined made in chelsea and so then you do made in chelsea and you know whether or not it was considered lame or whatever it was it was kind of a moment where you were more people were interested in you mm -hmm. and then what happens is is you go when you that sort of you want to sustain that, that you want to sustain that so mm -hmm. you're like okay what can make me interesting now what can make me stand out from the crowd yeah and the pond is freaking huge but so how do you stand out i think something like made in chelsea when that comes quite early and what you were like 21 yeah 20, you were younger than you're 20 i think i was 20 yeah dude i think no i actually i was 21 but still you're still figuring out who you are and like how you want to show up in the world. And when something like that happens quite in those quite formative years, it does set like a, I mean, how do you sustain that kind of growth? Mm. You know, when something kind of explodes over, and your, your perception of self kind of then it exists in an entity outside of you, you know, the version of you that's on TV that the newspapers are talking about. And then you're still trying to figure out who you are inside, but then you've got this thing that's almost bigger than that. Yeah, it's it's totally unnatural, really. It's totally it? unnatural. Yeah, it's, it is mad. But I think that the, we live in this existence, right? God, I love this. God, this is just great. Um, we live in this existence where we demand and desire the viral hit, whether yeah. that's on TikTok or a song or a podcast or an Instagram post. We want that. Ah, we we want that millionth view mm -hmm. or million straight away. But actually, that's the worst thing you can go after. Because mm. when you when you have something like that that quickly, the only way is down. You want mm. a a slow growth, whether it's a totally. brand, a business, an individual brand, or a, yeah. a relationship. Right? We've well, it, all been in those relationships where it's like, oh my god, I love you, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. and it crashes into and then it crashes and away. burns. You, you well, need like, to have that what growth. You, what comes easy won't last, and what lasts won't come easy. It's it's mm. so true. Wait, say that again. That's a good What's one. What's easy won't last, and what lasts won't come easy. And I think doing something like look, we were very young. But doing something like reality TV, that is epitomizes that instant success and instant gratification that we're all experiencing on our own scales at the moment because of the nature of wanting viral success and like getting that million stream or whatever it might be. But when we're chasing that, it's like it's it's kind of an addiction in itself. It's chasing that dopamine, that serotonin yeah. hit of like when you're gambling, you just want to get that quick fix. And then it you, it spikes and then it drops back down. Then you want another spike. But I think we're so, we've been so conditioned to think that that is normal and that is success. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's, you know, modern society, we have, as you say, been so conditioned all because of the people that are making so much money. Mm. They're basically just attacking like our base human instincts. Yeah. Right? And they're taking the it, they're thing, taking yeah. it to the complete next level. Yeah. Like. But there was something so, uh, this is what, but, but my dad, actually not my dad, but my mum always said to me, Oh, this, or someone said to me, I don't know what it was, the, the best days of your life are right now when you were when I was a kid. And I was like, surely that can't be true. There's no way that and they said, yeah, your school days, the best days of your life. And now what I understand by that is it's that Peter Pan syndrome, right? Which is life is about responsibilities. Mm -hmm. and, and we actually, we actually push ourselves to, and responsibility is a good thing. Like they are a good thing because it puts us like in a certain way and stuff like that. But as a child, we don't have any responsibilities. We just, we don't, we have to worry about dying. Like literally that's it. But as we get older, we give ourselves responsibilities, children, marriage, relationships, um, mortgages, uh, rent, uh, businesses, whatever it may be. And I think that's what makes us struggle a lot because we, we keep going with these responsibilities all the time. And 
there's a part of me which realizes, God, I, I wish I realized how fun it was when we were younger. Mm. And I did realize how fun it was. But sometimes I, I basically now I forget to live in the present as much. I, th- I think there's a way to, to regain that childlike totally, sen- sense of say, mind. Yeah. How do we do this? It, just, I it know. just takes a hell of a lot of work. You have to strip away, how, how old are you, 40, 41 years? <laughs> Um, 41 <laughs> years of, e- of ego. So if, if you, totally, yeah. If you, 41 years of ego. No, but, no, but I get what he's saying. Like it's, I was listening to something so on the you, way here and I realised like my ego, the ego is the thing that tells you you have to be doing all these busy, busy things and you don't have time to sit down and meditate or you don't have time to like carve out in the day to spend with your partner. It's like the thing that's telling you you need to be doing a thousand things, like the monkey mind. Yeah. So we're all driven by, it's not like you're egotistical. It's just we are driven by our ego most of the time. The, the way the way I like to think about it, like so, when you're born, right, you have there's no there's no ego, right, and then over forty one years, you put layer <laughs> upon layer upon layer, and so you're you're viewing through your eyes through forty one layers or however mm. many layers. So the world you see is a completely stort, a distorted version of what's actually there. So yeah. if you can strip those back and go back to, you know, age one where you see the world in such a like beautiful and mm. amazing way, then that's, okay. that's amazing. Okay. It's very hard to do. Yeah, but how, so Kag, how do we do that? Well, I think that is the whole process. I, I've, you've completely nailed it. It's like, it's, we're not having to learn, we're having to unlearn. And I think the longer you go through life, whether it's, you know, 41 years or half long, then We're it's all the just, same age. Can we just put it out there? <laughs> to everyone who's listening, we're but all the same I, age. I think you know? now's a great age to do it. I think... I've been having conversations with... <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> well, well, it's not that late, but imagine imagine coming to these realisations when you're 70. Do you know what I mean? And some it's, people do. Some people do. But that's kind of irrelevant. I think it is about realising that it's our innate kind of given right to be in love, to feel enough, to feel worthy. We don't, we're not born feeling not those things. We just learn mm. and then build up these conditions and these belief systems that actually become detrimental to our happiness. So it's just about, I think, reconnecting with self and finding whatever tools or practices that allow you to do that. I think there's also something with blueprints, right? You spoke about that when you came on Saturn Returns. So Kags um, has her podcast, Saturn Returns. If you haven't listened to it, go and listen to it. It is phenomenal. It's amazing. And we've, we've spoken before in the podcast what it's about, but it's Cag can explain it a bit more, but um, I came on. I maybe I did speak about blueprints. My big thing that I had to realize is that throughout when I w- we're conditioned to have blueprints as kids, typically, which is okay. We got to grow up. We have the white picket fence. We have the family. We have the dog. Mm. We get to go on a skiing holiday. We get mm. to do this and that. You know, this is what my blueprint was. Totally, and especially then, a lot of it revolves around by thirty. Think how many conversations yes. were like, oh, if I'm not married by thirty, let's marry each other. Do you know what I mean? It's like all these things. Mm. And then you get to that point, but you rarely question why. Yes. And I think at this age, when so many people are doing those things because that's what their blueprint was or what they were told to do, and then kind of doing them and being like, I don't know if I actually wanted that. Wanted thing. to but do But don't really that. want to admit it because they've done it. Yes. And then you kind of get in this, I don't know, sticky situation with yourself. You completely, and also, which I didn't realize, right? I thought, okay, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have it figured out. Mm. By the time I was 30, I only just got to know myself. Yeah. Like I, I didn't know anything about me. I was my 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 ones to tens. <laughs> my ones to tens was like <laughs> you finally learned to count from one to ten. <laughs> my, for, for me, right, my ones my ones to tens was like um you know, knowing who mum and dad were and like, you know, learning how to spell ing and just like basically just fundamental things like, okay, this is red and yellow and all that stuff. 10 to, 10 to 20 was like understanding, oh, there's opposite sex. And oh, and it was like becoming more sexual in certain ways and understanding myself in the ways, oh, I can kiss this girl and oh, I like this girl. And, diff- and that you sort of figure yourself out there. 20s is like where you figure out what you kind of want to do in life. And what you don't. And what you don't. And that's more important. Mm. Figuring out, most people try to go out there, and I always say this, the greatest advantage I had was figuring out what I didn't want to do rather than what I did want to do. And the way I was able to do that is because I had a roof over my head and I had food Mm. on the table so I could figure out what I didn't want to do. Most people try and find out what they want to do rather than what they don't want to do. Mm. Um, So that happened there. And then 30s, you go, okay, fine. This is hopefully what I want to do because I think I'm right. And then your life begins. 
Yeah. But our blueprint is we're meant to be married and kids and all this, but I yeah. didn't fucking know what was going on. Can I ask, with when you started figuring out what you didn't want to do, did you carry any shame about that in towards your late 20s? I don't think so. I think I was really quite lucky because I couldn't have done anything else yeah. than doing what I'm doing. So I, was, I just couldn't do it. I, so I my brain didn't allow me. I think a lot of people feel a lot of shame around not figuring it all out by the time they're 30 and then they can't communicate about it because you also always feel like everyone's got it all figured out and you're the only one that wasn't sent the sort of handbook of life. Which is total nonsense. That's one of the things that, that does or Come used, on, used to bother me a lot is like... Yes, going, Buddha. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry, right. I'm not sorry. Encouraging. He said, he said he was, chairing he, the meeting. He said he was going to get me back. Yeah, I think we need to have a bit of a uh, bit of a session together, Jay. Um, I've now totally forgotten what the fuck I was talking about. You asked. That's what crack does. No. To you. Anyway, it, the thing that all, like used to bother me a lot was I would try and do so many different things because I would go, oh, what if that's the one that mm. you know I become really good at and I become really happy at. And I, I almost was like forcing myself to do all this stuff. And in doing so, it was actually quite shit, all of it, because it's too much. So now I kind of sit back and I kind of like let the universe like yeah. do its thing. And actually, it's pretty fucking good. Like being calm and just letting things happen. Surrendering a little bit. So, yeah, it is surrendering. Kag, are you good at surrendering things? It's something I have to practice. Not always. I definitely think my 20s were... I was trying to control everything so much and I felt a lot of shame for things that didn't pan out the way I hoped they would. And just the more I tried to control, the more things fell apart. Well, what are those things? I think it was definitely, you know, and that's in essence, the whole point of Saturn Returns is like when you turn 29, Saturn is supposed to bring about this sort of cosmic coming of age. But at the time, I didn't really realize what was happening. And whether you believe in astrology or not, it's definitely a pivotal moment in someone's life where perhaps the relationship they were in is not the one that they thought it was going to be their kind of marriage and all those things were going to happen with, or their career isn't going the way they hoped. Or it might be all of those things happening at the same time. But I think they feel really personal individuals. So you don't really know how to speak about them because you just kind of look at people that seem to have those things figured out. And I guess in a way it was kind of all of those things for me. I felt very much like I don't entirely know what direction I'm going in. I don't, you know, I was, yeah, in terms of relationship, there was so much I had to navigate around that in, in terms of addressing like myself first before I could fully be in a healthy relationship. Mm. And so it, it was just a lot. And I think a massive component of that was that I felt alone in it and I don't think that that's necessary because I think these thoughts and feelings are all actually very common but we don't share them enough I love that that's freaking great I really like that um on that note we're gonna have to end for part one we're gonna speak more about your podcast we're gonna talk about your book mm -hmm. yeah all right you can talk about that I think so well, okay well we are now well, okay we are now <laughs> And loads more things. Guys, we'll see you back in part two. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to part two of Private Parts, the podcast where nothing is off limits, 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 limits. Even putting your shoes on the sofa. Sorry, I didn't want to do that. It's because I'm so comfy right now. I know. I know. Um, Kag, I, I, I feel like I didn't ask you something. Are you, um, are you happy at the moment? Are you good? Are you okay? I am happy. I you am look happy, happy, man. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you do. You look great. And I say this every single time. We've known each other since we were 15 years old. So I feel a real bond with you always. Really? And that real calming bond that I have with you. Um, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Astrology, all these things you love. Saturn Returns we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. Alex Mitten, his star sign. What do we think he is? Does, I don't think he even knows. I don't think he even knows. I've never been very good at this. I ha so I have Nora, who's the astrologer for Saturn Returns. And mm. the amount of information she has around astrology is just mind-blowing. I like it as a tool for sort of personal development. But if I'm going to completely... Yes. Yeah. You a cancer? No. Oh. I think that's. I think I'm close though. What is it? What is it? What is a cancer? Well, can, I, you're gonna be like, my brother's a cancer, but they're actually known to be quite emotional. I'm a Taurus, which, but then also it's 
you have your moon and your rising. So you have your star, your sun sign, which is, I'm a Taurus. Okay. And then my moon is Pisces and then my rising is Libra. So it's kind of like those three things make up the tapestry of like your personality. Well, that's so wild. Say, that's what I'm trying. Yeah, someone was talking about So what about does that mean earlier. about you? I'm going to Google this about me. What does that mean about you? So so you're a what? You're a what? what? So yeah. my, my moon is Pisces. So I definitely resonate with a lot of Pisces. I, I often am attracted to Pisces. Oh, really? Well. A, as a Pisces moon, you have the richest imagination of all the 12 zodiac signs. Because Ooh. your moon is Pisces, you are creative, have a delicate sensibility, and are very sensitive to energy. That is so right? vibely true. Nice. Uh, you, For you, the people you work with and the environment you work in are more important than work itself. Mm, which is something that I've definitely learned over the last couple of years. Is wow. That you know, the day, and I think this is probably relatable or true to anybody, but your day-to-day experience and like who you're interacting with is so much more important than the end goal, you know? And I think we're so focused on wanting to achieve and get to that destination point that we forget to kind of, that actually the enjoyment should come from each moment. So how, how do we work out our moons? How do we do that? You have to, you have to find out what your time of birth is. That's the thing you might have Mine to message your mum. Mine is dawn. Oh yeah, I was born at like born at f- dawn. I was born at like <laughs> five, four, four, four a.m. So. But you can f- you can find things online where you just type in your date of birth, your place of birth, and your time. What is my moon sign? Okay, here we go. We're going to do what is my calculate my moon sign? Cafe astrology. Here yeah, we go. Cafe, Cafe astro- astrology. Mm. <laughs> yes, okay, one, guys. Yeah, fine. Here we go. November. We're doing this third year, uh, nineteen ninety six. <laughs> 1988. <laughs> the exact hour, I'm going to say 4, 4, 4.30. I'm going to just go for 4.30 because why the hell? 4.30. 4.30. Uh, birth city, Oxford. This is fab. Okay, Oxford. No, okay, submit. Here we go. Your moon is Virgo. In mm, Virgo. I love Virgos. Do you? Yeah. So wh- when I was um, hiring someone for the podcast, my astrologer told me, she was like, you just need a Virgo. That's your only criteria. So put up something on Instagram saying I'm looking for a Virgo. And I, oh. I had obviously quite a few applicants. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Me changing and them then, all the time. Hello. And then anyway, this, girl, this girl called Sydney sent in this incredible, because I also said, I was like, I don't want CVs. I just want you to write a little bit about why you like the podcast and stuff. Mm. And she put together this incredible like package. I was like, oh my goodness. And as soon as I read the first line, I was like, that's the one. And she has changed my life. And she's, you know, a classic Virgo, very organized. Wow. Yeah, she's the one that keeps my my life glued together mm. without hers. By the way, to the listeners out there, that is such a cool way mm. to to get someone on your team. If you if you I are mean, CVs are so outdated as well. <laughs> it's like, Google are gonna do it. I, am I got looking... I got seven <laughs> B's and GCSE, like, that's not going to tell me I anything. So rather than a CV, you're like, well, my moon rises on a... <laughs> yeah. Day. You're I'm hired. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, but I mean, it, look, I like the that. evidence is there. I'm a convicted murderer, amazing. but I am a Virgo. <laughs> I, love, I love that. We'll let that slide. going to put out. I'm looking for a Scorpio. <laughs> if anyone is a Scorpio. So, but you know, uh, you say that though, but that's the next wave of what's going to happen in dating on dating apps. So have you heard of CoStar and the Pattern? No. no. So they're like, That's so they're astrology apps where you put in your information, then it gives, gives you like daily things. It tells you what's going on astrologically at the moment. And then now it's moving into this thing where it will be setting people up based on their birth charts and their stuff. I, I think that stuff's amazing, but I always think I'm like, are we like fucking with uh, like a system? Do you know what I mean? We're like kind of putting people together when it might happen anyway we've been doing that i know what are you talking do you know, about do you, know, do you know what i mean we're doing it based on just photo, think photo no, no, I, know. Yeah. no I, I know i'm saying about oh, dating oh, as right. well yeah though. i actually totally agree i personally am not it's not for me i like to organically meet people okay to put signs out on Instagram. i'm gonna i'm gonna asking for my virgo that's not for my romantic <laughs> life my Vir- yeah, i'm looking for a virgo <laughs> my, yeah, yeah. it would be on brand yeah it would be on brand. okay so uh virgo virgo is an earth sign and so uh, pertains to tangible or physical things born with the moon in virgo you are likely to have an inner, innate need to improve <laughs> or refine the circles around you. Shut up! There it is. That's me. I just said that at the beginning. Exactly. What the? <laughs> Combining practical know-how with analytical quality necessary to achieve sp- 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 specific oh God. <laughs> <laughs> And they always have a stutter. He can't, he can't believe this. <laughs> Virgo is a sign of service. Well, hello, <laughs> ladies, uh, step up. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. That is true. 
Yeah, there you what? go. Okay, mate, we've got to do you now. Come on, buddy. So, so I'm actually a Gemini, which I think oh, is you're close. Oh, you're a Gemini. No, we're going to do so, so your, your month is, you're born in uh, yeah. June, July. 14th of June. 14th of June, that's it. And mm. you were born... Know, should we put our actual birthdays on, uh, on the podcast? Can people I hack our... Think... No, I don't <laughs> think so. Sorry, can people... Some, some of the little paranoid this <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have we... that weed brown this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say we can't? Because I don't. Oh have. my god! Come on, give me a break. Okay, and you were but... born in 1990. 1990. <laughs> card with the bomb in it. <laughs> <laughs> 1990. 1990. Yeah. 1990. Okay, yeah. here we go. Your hour was, I think, 4 a.m. Yeah, 4 a.m. as well. Okay, let's go for 4 a.m. Party, party time. Party time. Born, but birth of, but city birth. Uh, city. I was born in Hackney, mate, London. <laughs> Hackney, Missouri, Hackney, England. Okay, here we go. We're submitting. Submit. Okay, you ready for this? This is so exciting. You're Aquarius. Aquarius. Aqu moon. Aquarius moon. Yeah, Aquarius nice. moon. We're chilled. Apparently. Uh, what is Aquarius moon? Here we go. Moon in Aquarius is the domain of oddballs and uh, something else. They built to watch, question, disrupt. Naturally shy and acutely different. Yeah, but bear this in mind, is so no, true. Because the moon sign is more like your internal world. So mm. a Gemini is also it's known to be quite split mm -hmm. so sort of no, two personalities but this then... is Mitty this is you well let's keep going okay sorry they're built to watch uh, question and disrupt that is so true mm -hmm. naturally shy true and acutely different true they regularly feel like they're outside like outsiders a somewhat lonely positioning that grants them the vantage point of observation that, mm. yeah, that is true that is quite true that, that is, is really true, true. Yeah, oh yeah. my lord yeah. really yeah. that is really true do you think you're, are you naturally quite shy I, I do, yeah. I was very shy before I did TV. Well, mm. shy, like... Shy is the wrong word. Sh shy is Or introvert. <laughs> introvert. Yeah, I, introvert. I was, yeah, natural introvert. Doing TV, like, basically was like, push me in the deep yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. And I'll speak. I'm like, hi, how you doing? I literally couldn't speak for the first two years. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so I'd be like, guys, you got so... Hello. We used to go and watch the screenings and it would literally cut to Alex. Hi. <laughs> no, and and everyone like, oh, I'd look, look at the I'd boring look, bloke. <laughs> I'd look around at the producers and go, well, like, did you cut loads of stuff? They're like, no, that's, li that's literally all so you, you said. We actually had to slow you down. <laughs> so, <laughs> slow you yeah, down. Yeah, and no, I was terrible. Also at school, public speaking, I would go so red, hated it. Would you shake? Yeah, shaking like a leaf. I would do you like public speaking? Oh, he loves it. I loves would walk up in like a Shakespeare outfit. Hello. You, 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 <laughs> no. you must have some Leo in your chart because you are such a natural stageman. Yeah, but I still get, I get nervous. I, I have terrible nerves. Showman rather than oh stageman. my God, my nerves are out of control. But they don't, bad. Just, they don't like interrupt your performance. Yeah, they do. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, Did like, you see his stand up? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, it was bad. But you know what? Good, good on you for yeah, doing Yeah, exactly. It. It's I, I know. It's yeah, really brave. But I think, but with UK, you you've just been touring with Saturn Returns. How mm. was that for you? I again, super super nervous before. Like that whole week, I couldn't really sleep properly. I just you can't constantly in a state of fight or flight, you know, because mm. you just feel that something's happening. And I think naturally I perceive an audience as an audience of critics and that's probably my own stuff but perhaps historically they have been or when we did TV it was like it was met with quite a lot of criticism but I couldn't have had a like lovelier or warmer community they were just made me feel so supported and I absolutely I loved it I love being on stage I love talking with them it was amazing because you're you're a natural performer as well I like performing. Yeah, you, you are 100% singing, TV, being on stage, whatever it is, acting. You, you're a performer. That's, I feel like, where you sort of belong. Mm. And also, I think, I don't know, but I'm guessing where you feel happiest. Yeah, I do. I feel very comfortable on a stage. But then, you know, I get so in my own head before and I get such bad imposter syndrome. And I, I taught myself out of a lot of things, which is something I'm trying to work on because... I'm always anticipating, you know, the worst. And I think we, we can all do that. But I would love to, I think nerves can be a good thing to a degree, but I would love to just be a bit more confident with it because I know I love it when I'm up there. Yeah, I, I, I admire people who can just be confident with it. I think it just takes time maybe and experience. I don't know. know. I don't know. Maybe it does. But then, but then also you do have, because I think you're the same, but you have your book coming. 
Yes. Can we we can talk about this, right? I don't know, but yes, let's. Yeah, okay, great. So so ex- explain the book. So the book is sort of an extension of the podcast. So I have Nora doing the astrology part and then I'm kind of telling personal anecdotes and stories of me navigating that kind of moment in time and all the lessons that I learned from it. So it's just like me being as honest and truthful as I can. The actual writing process has been amazing. Now it's in the Do you like I, it? I love writing. It's very cathartic and I think that part is one thing and then the editing that's when the perfectionism the imposter syndrome mm-hmm. the self-sabotaging they all start rearing their heads in unison and it's quite a lot because I think when you're putting out a book and it's something very truthful and vulnerable you're always scared of how it's going to be received or any creative project for that matter because it's something that's really you know a, a piece of you and that may be met with some criticism and how you know how you're going to balance that out and be okay with it so this part is definitely um challenging because it's my nature to also always go to find like authority in other people and that's been a big theme and it's very you know Saturnian in its nature is like throughout my 20s I always wanted someone to tell me mm. how to be or like give me the keys to my kingdom and tell me how to live my life and then when people would I'd be like that's not right. <laughs> I, I do that all the time. And until I'll wait until someone's told me to do something and often yeah. I won't do anything, but I could have just done it myself. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's a really big thing that I'm trying to practice at the moment. It's like, mm. don't, when you're at that step just before the door, don't wait for someone to open it for you. Just go through it. And I'm just, it's brings up a lot of fear, I think, because with that means a lot of responsibility. And, you know, we're, we're afraid to take that responsibility and that have that personal sovereignty over our lives. Mm. Do, do, what, is, what is more revealing to yourself, uh, like creatively, writing a book or writing music? Um, not writing music, performing music is really, that's where I get really, really nervous. Really? And really afraid that people are going to judge me and think I'm rubbish. And I think I've shied away from doing it for that reason. And I'm, I'm kind of sad about that sometimes because I think it's something that really lights me up. And then to kind of go back to what we mentioned before, it's like, what are the things that fulfill you and make you happy independently of how they're going to be received in the world? Mm. And I think if we all could cultivate that a little bit more, we'd be a lot happier and we'd be more childlike because children just get up and sing yeah. and play and they don't, they don't care. They don't care. And we just, I think we I think did. if it's not going to be super successful <laughs> or if it's going to... Yeah, it's terrified. <laughs> well, well, you as didn't a kid, get up. As a really? kid. Oh, so scared. No, well, <laughs> I, I think I developed that about age six. So. Really? But again, it was something that was developed. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it was of a course, yeah, it's, thing. it's conditioned. Isn't I, I it? Love, what, what about you, Jay? Um, <laughs> Wri- writing your book or... Uh, <laughs> he didn't, didn't write a word. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it wasn't cathartic for you, it was lethargic. <laughs> very good I love that idea of we have to unlearn things Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people what we don't realise is anxieties whatever it may be stresses uh, phobias they have been learnt so you can they're not us they're not us so you can unlearn them and a lot of people who have certain ways about them, they they well, they then go, well, this is me for the rest of my yeah. life. And you can and actually unlearn And that comes with a lot it. of shame. And I yeah. think then we, we can't progress or we can't, you know, and, and in the context of like relating to others, we're always going to have things that come up that make us behave in certain ways, but we can't own it and see it for what it is, that it's some, a learnt behavior that we can actually unlearn. And it's just a question of new neural pathways, which is mm. like a, a whole other thing. But are you um, Are you in love at the moment? I am in love. What? Yeah. Get out of town. I am in love. Come on. <laughs> you with who? Come on, can you tell, tell us something? Oh, I Come don't on, know. Tell me something. Um, his name is Tom. Hi, Tom. And yeah, we... I'm very in love. <laughs> you're very bashful. No, that's amazing. How do you know you're in love? You just know. Yeah, but that's that's... That's a cop out way. How do you know you're in love? Because is it where you trying to get info? Yeah, I I love it. How do you know? How did you know with Soph? What was the the Uh, saying? He knew when she was crossing the road that you'd be a bit sad if she got run over. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) yeah, it's true. When she was swimming, when she was swimming, when she, and when I suddenly got this urge that, oh, she, it was an urge that I suddenly, that's not what I knew I loved it. It's honestly psychotic. (laughs) So if it was just like a a friend, you'd be like, oh, it's all right if they die. No, I thought, I suddenly had the realization that Sophie could die. 
And I, I, and I didn't never thought of that before. I never thought that your loved ones could die. I, you doesn't, you don't think about those morbid things. Mm. And I suddenly thought about Sophie. I thought, oh, she, she's a human. She can die. And I went, that wouldn't be good. Like that would be one of the worst. That would be awful. I remember thinking in my heart going, I don't think I could take that. And that was the moment that made me realize, oh my God, I really love her. Because mm. I, I, for her to be taken away from me would just be awful. Mm. And, and I could accept being taken away because her love wasn't for me or something like that. But taken away because for, for reasons that wasn't her fault or my fault or something else, just mm. another thing. To, I don't think I could live with that. Mm. And I remember thinking that I went, I, I love her. But also with Sophie, I remember there was a moment when we had just first started dating and my mum phoned me up and said, who are you dating at the moment? I said, oh, this girl, Sophie. And she said, you like her? And I went, yeah, she's it's different. I don't know, it's just different. So come on, Tom. <laughs> Why do you love him? <laughs> I get protected. <laughs> Why? I also don't want him to die. <laughs> Did you have that moment where you you kissed or you you were intimate with each other? Was it electric? Do you ever have that moment? I'll share a little bit. Come so on. when we first met, but we actually it wasn't. I always end up telling things on this show. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> you just have to get warm me up a little bit. <laughs> So I went to boarding school when mm. I was 13 and I was very, very, very homesick and I ended up having to leave because I was so homesick and I went back to the school I was at before. But at the school, there was a boy in the year above that I had, you know, when you have those crushes that are sort of, you think you're going to, you think you're going Can't to die. Breathe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and I had this crush on this person. And anyway, I then left the school because I was so homesick and I hated it there. and. Cut to this summer, I bumped into this person no who is Tom. That's so nice. Um, and as soon as we chat, like, obviously when you're 13, you know, a very long time ago, but I was talking with him and I just felt this energy that was being reciprocated. And I, I think that it took a lot of unlearning for me in relationship because I associated a lot of anxiety around an infatuation for a good thing. I think we can often do that, you know? Mm. Um and we just, there was just an instant connection. But I would definitely say that when we had our first date and at the end, I, I'm a big believer in the kiss tells you a lot. And when he kissed me, I was like. Really? Um, yeah. And, you know, I think we all, we like the idea. Did of just, he lean in? Did you, what, how, 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 <laughs> what happened? He, you know. <laughs> you know, sometimes you kiss people and it just doesn't really yeah. connect. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this was one of those kisses that I was like, it feels like you've kissed a million times before. It's mm. like Lego. Oh, and it sounds like a weird analogy. Like Lego. <laughs> what, really, really plastic and <laughs> no. brittle. Well, like it fits. It, it like fits. This is it's what Tetris. You yeah. it, it, it's Tetris. And, and then you, you kiss and you go, and in your head you go, do you think they felt that? Because that was unbelievable. It's the I, worst if they haven't. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it, I don't think one person receives it differently. Really? I don't think so. I think God, it's, I, I think love it's a, that. I think it's a... A mutual. A mutual exchange. Yeah. I've said this before because the first time I've ever had sex with Soph. Okay, yeah, she could love this, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I orgasmed everywhere. <laughs> I orgasmed everywhere. <laughs> I don't think you can do that, can you? <laughs> I sorry, ruined it. No. I, I said to her out loud, I was and I went, Did you feel that? <laughs> sorry, was... you became Clint Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Are you feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> Because I can go again in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> and what did she say no, back? I just said, I just honestly, because it was so electric. Mm. It was electric, and my and I um my grandmother <laughs> said to me once, going straight from orgasm no, to your grandmother. My grandmother, I said to my grandmother once, I said, "Do you believe in love at first sight?" I said this to my grandmother. And my grandmother does, so I kind of weirdly believe in stuff like this. And I've said this story before, but I won't say that story. But she said she met a guy once when she was, work when she was in the army and she met him and she t shook his hand and it was like a lightning bolt. Mm. Yeah, and, she w and, he and they both felt it. Yeah. And she never saw this person again, ever. And still to this day, before she died, what was, he, what was he doing in the army? He, he wasn't doing any sort of like secret work with no. like Tesla or something. But, but, but until it, she died at 94, my grandmother did. Wow. And to, even to the day she died, she said, when you find that person that you feel that electricity with, don't let it go. Because I think it comes, it, it rarely it comes. comes. Around, yeah, yeah. It, never, it doesn't come around that much. And she swears. And my grandmother was not spiritual, religious, anything. But mm -hmm. she felt an electric thing. So to anyone who feels that oh, moment, 
stick with it. But relationships are hard. They're, hard. They're, they're really hard. But I think that they're, they're mirrors, you know, to ourselves. And I think we do our best work and deepest healing in relationship. I think we get sold this idea that we have to be perfect and like complete before we find the right kind of partnership. But I believe mm. that actually it's in relating to other that we can really, you know, deepen our connection to self because they'll always reveal the parts of you that you can't see. So if I had to say to Kagi Dunlop that you, you wanted to be this person in years to come and you were, and you were like, okay, this is who I want to become. Mm-hmm. Who would that person, who would you want to be? Who do I want to be Who do you to want come? to be in years to come? I think the thing that is most important to me is, you know, this process of self-inquiry, of reflection, and to constantly be on that journey of getting to know myself better first and foremost. So that's something that's really been important for me the last couple of years and I think it will continue to be and to just build things from that you know to be someone that stands for vulnerability and authenticity and to encourage others to do the same and you know the the thing about the podcast I get a lot of people saying oh you're very honest or you're very vulnerable it's like how does that make you feel but paradoxically I've learned that the more open and vulnerable I can be the more strong I feel, the more stable and like the greater foundations. Mm -hmm. And I think for a long time, I just wanted to be, you know, present like a facade to the world. And that was my twenties in a way. So I think. There's a, there's a person called, oh, I'm trying to find it. Um, It's a Ted talk. It's all about vulnerability. Brene Brown. Yes. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. And it is incredible about how important vulnerability is. Yeah, and And there's a reason that that connected with so many people. I mean, that kind of made her explode because when we are vulnerable, I think we, when we are vulnerable, for me, what that means is being able to speak our truth without knowing or guaranteeing the outcome, you know? And we like the idea of being vulnerable, but in practice, it's a really hard thing. What's her name again? Brene Brown. Brene Brown, and it's a TED Talk. Yeah. Let's go and check that out. it's, It's amazing. I guess a big part of vulnerability is. is not actually talking about it. That's where a lot of it manifests until you actually speak about it. And then it kind of like dis- exactly. dissipates, right? What do you yeah. mean by that? I don't, I just, I feel like a lot of the things that I maybe feel vulnerable about, I don't need to openly speak about. And then if you do, you kind of realize that it's not that. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you feel vulnerable about? About my huge penis. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. He was not letting you in. Not a touch. Not a Big touch. barriers went down. Fuck but we off. all we all have the stories <laughs> that we tell ourselves that make us, you know, like I said, to go back to the beginning, feel unworthy or not lovable or not enough. And there's so much vulnerability in that. But when we share them with someone that we think might then say, oh, you're not lovable. That's the story we tell ourselves. Yeah. Or, oh, actually, like, shame on you for being that way or whatever it might be. And so we, we try and manage the outcome and therefore we don't actually express our vulnerability because we're, we're scared of how it's going to be received. But most of the time when we do, not only is it an invitation for others to do the same, but it also is met with a lot more love and compassion than we would ever anticipate. Kags, I love that. Hey, uh, to all you listeners, please go and check out Kagi's podcast, Saturn Returns. It's incredible. An episode with me. It's fab. You should probably listen to that one to kick things off. It's a real good one. Um, Kags, your book, when is it coming out? It's not coming out. It's not coming out until next year. But... Okay, but that's cool. But keep an eye out for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and any other things you have on the horizon that we're excited for? The next season of Saturn Returns. Um, and then hopefully I'm going to bring out some music this summer. I think that I... You're going to do it? I think I should. Yes. Yeah. You know, in terms of just to echo what we just had a conversation about and being vulnerable and doing the things that light you up. It's like, well... I went and recorded a project over lockdown. And so, again, I'm just sitting on it because I'm procrastinating. Release it. Mm. The easiest thing to do is procrastinate. Oh, no. It's, it's really that's, that's the easiest one. The, 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 uh, of course. And, and typically anxious people are good at doing that because that's the easiest option. So you just let it go. Do it. People mm-hmm. will love it. Um, I said to you before, you're one of my oldest and greatest friends. And um, I love it. Every single time I see you on the podcast, whatever it is. So, Kags, thank you so much for coming thank you on. Thank for having me. And also, I, I think we, at the end of the podcast, we like to leave our listeners something inspirational, but perhaps something that, that can, that really helps you on a daily basis. What is that? Um, 
Well, something that I was writing about in the book, because obviously a big part of it is navigating your 20s. And I don't know how old the majority of your audience is, but in terms of what we just spoke about, of feeling, you know, like you don't know who you are or what direction you're going to go in. I think the only wrong step is not taking one. And that's something I need to remind myself of constantly in terms of not sitting on the fence, procrastinating about stuff. Just try it out and, you know, the universe will show you the rest. Kagi Donald, thank you so much. Everybody, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.